Hello friends, welcome to Weekly Recap China Edition. This week's topics are Tech tensions between the US and China China's shadow banking system in freefall China's population shrank in 2023 The not selling ban lifted More problems at Evergrande And Chinese balloons over Taiwan But of course we start this week with a quick look at the financial markets and other financial news The Shanghai Composite declined by half a percent to 2,878 while the Shenzhen component dropped by also a half a percent to 8,923 on Wednesday, closing at their lowest levels in at least three and a half years. This decline was a result of the lack of aggressive policy measures to support growth in China, which continued to impact investor sentiment. Investors are also looking forward to China's trade and inflation figures this week, as they will provide guidance on the economic and policy outlook. China's 10-year government bond yield has dropped to approximately 2.54%, reaching its lowest levels since April 2020. Traders are increasingly confident that the People's Bank of China will implement further policy easing measures this year in order to support economic growth. There is now speculation about potential reductions in key lending figures and the reserve requirement ratio during the first half of 2024, aimed at maintaining sufficient liquidity. Analysts believe that China's deflationary environment and struggle economic recovery has contributed to these expectations. Furthermore, Beijing has expressed its commitment to boosting domestic demand, ensuring a swift economic recovery and promoting stable growth. As highlighted in an intern report on the country's 14th fifth year plan published by the parliament last month. Investors are now eagerly awaiting Chinese trade and inflation figures this week to gain more insights and guidance. This week being the first week of the new year, there's little financial news to go on. We did however receive the PMI numbers for the services sector and an update on China's foreign exchange reserves. The Gaixin China General Service PMI rose to 52.9 in December 2023 from 51.5 in November, surpassing market expectations of 51.6. This marks the 12th consecutive month of growth in services activity and the fastest expansion since July. Primarily driven by a significant increase in new business, new orders experienced the strongest growth in seven months, with exports orders rising for the fourth month in a row, reaching the highest level since June. Moreover, employment saw an increase for the first time in three months, while backlogs of work remained unchanged after a continuous rise for the last 16 months. China's foreign exchange reserves increased to $3.238 trillion in December 2023, surpassing market expectations of just $3.2 trillion. This marked the highest amount since December 2021, thanks to the dollar weakening against the major currencies. Throughout December, the yuan strengthened by 0.5.2% against the dollar, while the dollar experienced a 2% decline against a basket of other major currencies. Additionally, China's gold reserves rose to $148 billion by the end of this month, up from $145 billion in November. Our first story this week is about the escalating tech tensions between the US and China, particularly in the semiconductor and chip sectors. Semiconductors, crucial to the tech rivalry between the two nations, are witnessing significant developments, with chips gaining particular attention. China has experienced sharp declines in chip imports over the last two years, with a 15.3 year-on-year drop in 2022 and another 15.2% year-on-year drop in the numbers of units from January to August 2023. This decrease in imports raises questions about China's progress in import substitution. After Washington imposed tough curbs, Chinese companies are increasingly relying on homegrown supply chains with significant investment from Beijing and other investors. For instance, Semiconductor Manufacturer International Corporation, a major Chinese chip manufacturer, has announced substantial investment to expand into more advanced work. These developments come in the wake of escalated trade tensions initiated by the Biden administration, which cut off China's access to Western tools and skilled workers needed for advanced semiconductors. This led to disruptions in companies like the Yangtze Memory Technologies Corporation, which is now overhauling its supply chains and business plans. The US restrictions aimed at curtailing China's military capabilities have spurred China's push for a more independent chip sector. Despite the withdrawal of Western technology and funding, state funding is pouring in to develop less advanced but still profitable semiconductors. 
China is also attempting to use older components from abroad and less advanced domestic equipment to manufacture high-end chips. These developments signify a shift in China's approach to its semiconductor industry. Companies throughout the supply chain are assessing how to replace Western chips and components, even those unaffected by US controls. For example, Guangzhou Automobile Group, a state-owned electric vehicle company, aims to resource all its chips from Chinese providers eventually. The repercussions of these shifts are widespread, with dozens of Chinese chip companies planning to raise money throughout public offerings. This includes China's second largest chip maker, Huangwang Semiconductor, and a chip tool maker backed by Huawei. The US has responded by drafting new rules to restrict American venture capital investments in advanced chip companies in China and mulling tighter controls on technologies like quantum computing and chip manufacturing equipment. Beijing's response has been robust, with the government activating a state fund to support companies like YMTC. The big fund injected approximately $1.9 billion into YMTC in February to counter US restrictions. Additionally, cities like Guangzhou have earmarked significant funds for semiconductor and tech projects to aim to replace Western chip equipment suppliers. China's efforts to become self-reliant in chip manufacturing are evident in the investments and in initiatives undertaken by its largest chip manufacturers like SMIC and Hong Kong Semiconductor. However, the lack of access to world-class tools needed for advanced chips could hinder China's progress in, in industries like AI and aerospace. The situation is further complicated by international companies redirecting their investments away from China's semiconductor industry. Leading chip manufacturers like Samsung and TSMC are investing billions into new production facilities in the United States. This realignment of the semiconductor industry could create new supply chain vulnerabilities. As reliance on a single country for an essential components is risky. In response, the US is taking measures to counter China's growing influence in the semiconductor industry. The bipartisan leaders of the House Select Committee on the Chinese Communist Party have urged the Biden administration to take stronger actions, including potential tariffs, to counter China's dominance in older generation microchips. The US is also supporting domestic production of both advanced and older generation chips through the CHIPS Act. China's push for technological self-sufficiency, particularly in semiconductors, is a response to these external pressures and part of a broader strategy to assert its global technological leadership. This ongoing battle over chip technology between the world's two largest economies reflects the strategic importance of semiconductors in economic prosperity, national security and technological advancement. Now let's shift our focus to another subject that is quickly garnering more and more headlines. Let's have a look at China's banking sector, a key yet often misunderstood part of its financial landscape and the emerging crisis that's shaking its foundations. Let's start by understanding what shadow banking in China really is. It encompasses a range of non-traditional banking activities, which can be broadly categorized into two main parts, bank's shadow and traditional shadow banking. Bank's shadow involves activities by banks that extend credit beyond traditional loans. This includes reclassifying loans as investment products, allowing banks to lend money without it appearing as a traditional loan on their balance sheets. Traditional shadow banking, on the other hand, refers to credit creation by non-bank financial intermediaries like trust loans, wealth management products and various forms of off-balance sheet financing. Unlike banks, these entities don't create new money, but facilitate the transfer of existing money from savers to borrowers. Shadow banking plays a multifaceted role in China's financial system. It provides credit to sectors where traditional banking may be restricted, like local government financing vehicles, real estate sectors, and businesses and industries facing credit restrictions from traditional banks. This system allows financial institutions to bypass regulatory restrictions such as capital requirements and loan-to-deposit ratios, crucial in China's tightly regulated banking sector. While shadow banking has been instrumental in supporting China's economic growth, especially when traditional banking channels are constrained, it introduces significant risks, including increased leverage, lack of transparency, and potential financial instability. The growth of shadow banking in China is a testament to the dynamic interplay between regulation, financial innovation, and economic development. Recently, Moody downgraded China's credit outlook 
bringing to light serious concerns about the country's real estate market affecting the broader economy. This has turned the spotlight into the shadow banking sector, estimated to be worth about 3 trillion and possibly as much as 12 trillion US dollars. Amid these economic upheavals, two major players in the shadow banking sector, Zhuangzhui Enterprise Group and Wangchang Trust, have faced significant financial struggles. Zhuangzhi, one of China's largest financial conglomerates, declared insolvency after defaulting on payments, leading to a criminal investigation. Shortly after, Wang Zhuang Trust delayed payments on several investment products. These incidents have fueled fears of a wider financial contagion from the faltering property market, already seen in large developers like Evergrande and Country Garden defaulting on their debts. The precarious position of China's shadow banking system, involving various financing activities, some of which include banks, reflect a broader systemic issue. The liquidity crunch and increasing defaults in this sector could lead to turmoil in the local bond market and add financial pressure on Chinese companies and local government entities. Trust firms, a significant component of shadow banking, might need to sell more liquid assets, such as corporate and local government bonds, to prepare for upcoming repayments. The increasing local government debt in China, increased by property market slump and the cost of pandemic-related lockdowns, adds another layer of complexity. The hidden debt, concentrated in local government financial vehicles, poses a significant risk. The issue faced by shadow banking firms like Zhuangzi and Wangzhang Trust, deeply involved in real estate, highlight the intricacies of China's financial system, where disturbances in one area can have unforeseen effects in others. As China grapples with these crises, the global community watches closely, recognizing the potential worldwide impact of these financial tremors in the world's second largest economy. The unfolding story of China's shadow banking crisis is not just a national concern, but a global one, with ramifications that could extend far beyond its borders. China's population is projected to have decreased for a second consecutive year in 2023, mainly due to a surge in COVID-related deaths and a weak economy. Experts studying population trend estimate that the number of new births in 2023 will be lower than the previous year, as long-standing issues like gender inequality and high child care costs continue to be unaddressed. The decline in birth rates can also be attributed to factors such as high youth unemployment, falling wages and a crisis in the property sector. This decline in population raises concern about China's economic growth and the pressure on local governments to provide elderly care and retirement benefits. China's security regulator has lifted a ban that restricted mutual fund managers from selling more shares than they bought on a daily basis. This ban was initially introduced last year with the aim of stabilizing the stock market. However, it's now been removed due to the increasing pressures faced by funds in terms of investor redemptions. With this change, mutual fund managers are now allowed to net sell stocks, which provides them with the necessary funds to repay redeeming investors. The lifting of this ban comes at a time when the Chinese stock market has encountered various challenges in 2023, including a sluggish post-COVID economic recovery and geopolitical tensions. Liu Wangzhou, an executive director and vice chairman of China Evergrande New Energy Vehicle Group, has been detained on suspicion of illegal activities. This is another setback for the company, which recently experienced the disappointment when a potential cash injection deal fell through. Evergrande and EV, the electric vehicle arm of China Evergrande Group, has not provided any specific details about the alleged crime or the timing of Liu's detention. As a result of the news, the company's shares have dropped 7.2% last week, adding to its already significant 12-month losses of 88%. These developments have occurred following the placement of the chairman of the parent company, China Evergrande, under police surveillance due to suspected crimes. Beijing has decided to remove Feng Shiqin, the head of the publication bureau of the Communist Party's propaganda department, following the recent market turbulence caused by proposed restrictions on the video game industry. This move by Beijing demonstrates their recognition of the impact on investor sentiment resulting from the crackdown on the tech industry. The proposed regulations aim to control the amount of time and money individuals spend on computer and smartphone games, 
and the public is invited to provide feedback until January 22nd. In response to this announcement, Chinese video games company have been actively reviewing the rules and making necessary adjustments to ensure compliance, creating some concern within an already struggling sector. High altitude balloons from China have been spotted floating over Taiwan ahead of the country's upcoming presidential election. The Taiwanese Ministry of National Defense has detected a Chinese balloon flying over the island, followed by three more balloons. While the balloons are said to be designed to collect atmospheric data, their appearance during the election period raises concerns of election interference. Taiwan has accused China of using various tactics to influence the election, including spreading false information and launching investigations into Taiwanese artists. China has previously denied attempting to influence Taiwan's elections. That's it for this episode. We hope the information we provided was helpful. If you have suggestions or want to discuss the covered topics, feel free to leave a comment below. We will be back next week with a new episode. Thank you for watching and hopefully see you next week. Bye bye.